Okay, let's say that uh, my book uh, Against the State or other arguments um, establish that state power has no moral legitimacy and thus that it's not the case that it should exist, the state. Um, still the question arises, it's a question that's put to me constantly, is anarchism a practical alternative? Now the first answer I give to that is no. Uh, we're not going to be living in a stateless world anytime soon uh, and in fact uh, the state itself makes the state inevitable. Uh, the state by definition is a body of people that exercise a monopoly of violence. Um, and once you have such mechanisms in place, I don't think there's probably any ultimate escape. And uh, thus I would say that the prospects for our species actually are extremely poor overall. However, let me say a few, make a few remarks about this. First of all, even if anarchism is not practical, uh, it serves a valuable function. Um, it serves the function in political philosophy, for example, that uh, skepticism serves in epistemology. And indeed, modern political philosophy, in some sense, uh, fundamentally rests on uh, an attempt to answer anarchist objections, that is, to establish the legitimacy of the state. That's during Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau, Hegel, uh, etc., etc., etc. Um, so you guys, even you status, need anarchism. Um, and a better anarchism might give us a better statism because the arguments for the uh, legitimacy of the state are extremely poor. Uh, furthermore, anarchism kind of serves a watchdog function in some ways. Uh, I mean, I think of Emma Goldman or uh, Nestor Machno um, telling Lenin off in his office early in the Soviet regime uh, pointing out that he was a totalitarian, which is, was always the function of anarchism in uh, relation to Marxist communism. Uh, if there had been a better anarchist uh, movement uh, through the early 20th century, there would have been uh, more skepticism, say, on the American left about Stalin, which was, would have been well in order. Uh, and then perhaps the American left wouldn't have been so discredited by their embroilment in totalitarianism. Um, now also, I'll say this, you know, just pointing out that the state has no moral legitimacy, that is, for example, that uh, the law makes no moral claim, qua law, but only insofar as it represents uh, independently legitimate moral principles, uh, is an important defense of civil disobedience, for instance. Uh, in fact, uh, I would say in general, obey the laws that you uh, are comfortable with and disobey those that you are not. There's no more reason not to, and in fact most people do this one way or another. Not everyone is, uh, almost no one is out there obeying all the speed limits. In fact, it's almost impossible to obey all the laws because they swarm like mosquitoes. But let me say this, I mean, there, anywhere where the basic power structures or organizational structures or associations do not uh, derive from coercion, there you have a little slice of anarchism in a state-addled world. Uh, and I mean, this could be anything from PTAs to bowling leagues to uh, cooperative mini-economies like uh, community-supported agriculture, agriculture uh, farms. Um, or informal barter systems like, uh, you know, uh, I've myself traded childcare for fresh eggs, for instance. Uh, that, a, there's an exchange that doesn't rely on the state, um, even its currency. Um, and, you know, in general, what I'd say is look to beef up any set of decent arrangements that are based on voluntary action rather than, uh, rather than coercion. Uh, try to make your temporary autonomous zones, to put it in Hakim Bey's uh, vernacular, and, uh, and try to expand them, you know? And we, what we can do is work within the interstices of the state. I mean, sometimes the state should be actively resisted by force. 
but you know for the most part we're just going to have to try to keep organizing outside the context of the state and most human associations believe it or not remain voluntary i mean the only real exceptions are uh are the state organized crime or perhaps some forms of corporate capitalism all right i'll also say this the state seems inevitable people can't even imagine life without it but of course probably for 98 percent of human history we lived without it and there are other possible modes of organization uh, one book i point you to is uh, this kind of work of meta-anthropology, I guess we might say. Uh, uh, um, Society Against the State by, uh, by Clostres, which uh, tries to show that various tribal cultures not only organized in fundamentally non-state style arrangements, fundamentally voluntary arrangements, but many of them actively resisted the incursion of the state. They were perfectly conscious of the state alternative and they uh, decided against it. And, you know, there'll be forms of organization after the state, too, if we survive that long. Uh, so, you know, I, th there's, th there's reason for hope. Uh, there's uses for anarchism, even if, you know, we're not really going to take to the hills uh, in the Blue Ridge and overthrow the United States government and uh, turn uh, our world into an anarchist utopia later on.